Hi, and welcome to the section of the Differential Equations Tutor. And in this section, we're going to cover a very important theorem that you've probably heard about in your class, but may not have fully understood, and that's called the Existence and Uniqueness Theorem. Uh, you know, I debated on whether to even give this its own section because really all I'm going to do is explain what the theorem means. The reason I'm putting it in its own section is because a lot of students, when you get to learning about what it is, your book usually makes a pretty big deal out of understanding this theorem, but when you read most of those theorems in the books, they're so convoluted and so hard to really understand that, that uh, it's difficult for a student a lot of times to really just get and boil down the, the main meaning of what it is. So what I'm going to do is give you the punchline, tell you what it is. I'm going to write down the theorem, and then we'll just sort of dissect it word by word so you really understand what it's saying. That's all I'm trying to do in this section. The other thing is different books are going to word this theorem a little bit differently. There's many different ways to write it, but it's always saying the same thing. So the existence and uniqueness theorem applies to differential equations because that's what we're studying. And what it really is trying to tell you is that if you have a differential equation, the punchline is uh, that this theorem guarantees that that differential equation has a solution. And not only that it has a solution, that it has a unique solution. In other words, one solution. Um, if the um, certain constraints are met, and we'll talk about what they are. In other words, if the differential equation is well behaved, that's really what it is. If there's no crazy discontinuities, if there's no jumping around, weird looking functions, if it's a normal, smooth, nice differential equation that's well behaved, we'll talk about what that means, then it will have a solution going through that initial condition and it'll be a unique solution. That's all it's really telling you. And the reason it's an important theorem is because, remember, we've solved some pretty relatively simple differential equations so far. But even in our very limited study of differential equations that we've done up till this point, some of the solution methods can get pretty, pretty involved. A lot of integration, a lot of going back, doing different things to even get to the solution. When you get to more and more complicated differential equations, um, the solution methods are actually going to get longer and lengthier and when you get to a certain point, you just nobody knows how to solve them. There's no way to write down a closed form solution. You know, x of t is equal to something. Um, so when you get to more and more complicated equations, it gets harder and harder to solve them. Just like integration, you might find an integral that you don't have a technique of integration for. You know that an integral exists, um, but you don't know what it is. And why is that? Because the theorems in calculus tell you for this function, every function we have in antiderivative. We call it an integral. It exists. So this is all the existence and uniqueness theorem is telling you. It's saying, look, if you have a differential equation, even if you have no idea how to solve it, people smarter than you and I have proven in the past that a solution exists and it's a unique solution provided that the differential equation is well behaved. So let's go ahead and write it down. That was the punchline. That's really what it is. That's what I want you to hold in your head as you're on your test or if you're asked to explain what the existence and uniqueness theorem is. What I'm going to do now is write it down so we can sort of dissect it so that when you read it in your book it won't seem so foreign. All right, so what we have is what we're talking about is the existence and uniqueness. theorem. Okay, that's what we're talking about. And what it basically is saying is the following. So suppose, and this is one way of writing it. Your, your book may not formulate it in exactly the same way, but it is intending to convey the same result. So those, suppose a first order, 